Welcome to Pisces Pet Emporium. We're excited today. We're setting up a new display tank in our row of displays. We want to share with all our customers and people that are new to Pisces how exciting an aquarium setup can be. So today we're going to focus on a freshwater planted aquarium and we're going to use a few ingredients here. Most of our substrate is going to be supplied by ADA, that's Amino Designer Aquariums out of Japan. This is for your planted aquarium, the best substrate out there for success for your plants. The other thing we're going to be using is we're going to be using some different rockwood and driftwood. And finally, we're going to use our imagination because with our imagination, we can create any world we want for our fish. So let's get started with our basic setup. And step one is to plan the layout of the aquarium. So what we've done here is we've laid out our rock ridge in a kind of vest snaky design. And the idea is we want to have the front to be a, a small, shallow area, maybe for some quarry catfish to place or a few shrimp to hang out, that type of thing. And towards the back, we're going to build up our plants so the whole back ends up being covered, especially our return and down tube to the side. We kind of want to camouflage that so it's not sticking out. We want to make this look as natural as possible. So first off, we started by cleaning our stones and laying them in an S shape. What we're going to do next then is we're going to add our power sand. Now the power sand from ADA Aquariums basically is a porous rock that's going to be the base of our substrate. These pebbles will provide the stone, the stones will provide housing for your bacteria to help keep your soil healthy and happy and your plants thriving. So let's lay in our power sand here at the back. And we just want to cover the bottom of the aquarium where the plants are going to be. And it doesn't have to be super thick, just enough for the bacteria to find a place to live, so I'll spread this out. Now the key to the power sand is you kind of want to keep it out of view. You want to keep it clean, looking and natural. So you're not going to see the power sand anywhere. It's going to be totally covered and out of view. As you can see, we've got the bottom of the glass at the back just covered. It's a nice, even layer that's going to allow for the bacteria to thrive with their foods and enzymes. And the whole key to this is these bacteria are going to keep the waste down and keep the soil oxygenated. That's going to provide a very healthy, safe environment for your plants to flourish. So first, we've laid down the power sand. The next step, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the enzymes and bacteria. Again, from ADA Aquarium, the leaders in planted aquarium technology. We carry their full supplies, their full uh, setup here. So we're going to put in some Penna P. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to blend this together in a cup. You want to keep it separate when you first start up so you can simply, you don't want to activate anything until you're ready to set up. So we're going to put in your, this is your Penac P. Fantastic. We got your Penac W here. We want to add some of the clear super from ADA Aquarium. This is going to help maintain the clarity of the water while your bacteria are growing. And while I'm doing this, I'll share with everybody out there, Pisces Pet Emporium also sells these in a starter pack. You'll get all five elements put together in smaller containers to help you with your smaller aquariums. So when you come in, we have the five elements in a starter pack for you. Makes it more economical and leads to great success for your aquarium.
Now lastly, we're going to add our Bacter 100. This is the bacteria as part of your five elements to give you a strong substrate or soil base for your planted aquarium. Now that I've got all the five elements in this cup, I'm going to give it a stir just to blend the elements. Now as I got these mixed up and together, I'm going to spread this. And these are your five elements again. This will be spread across your power sand. And as you can tell from the power sand, it's a nice porous substrate that's going to allow your bacteria to thrive and grow and reproduce so you can keep your soil healthy and happy for your plants. So let's go ahead and mix in the five elements on top of the power sand. And we'll just gently spread that around. And I'll just, I'll just take a little bit of water just to get all my five elements out of the cup. I don't want to waste any. So we'll just take a little bit of that and dribble it in. So we've laid down our, our basic design. We're going to have our rocks separating the front from the back. The back will become planted. The front is going to be open so we can set up a really nice display here. So now that we have our power sand down, it's time to build up our substrate in the back. So what I'm going to use here is some of the ADA soil. And we'll use a blend of it this time. So we'll be mixing some of the Malaysia with some of the Africana. Um, and it's just to balance the aquarium. And so we can use multiple plants and have success with that. So I'm going to go ahead now and start building up the back with your ADA Eco Soils. Now I want to control the environment a little bit, I don't want it to be a big mess, so I'm using a cup just to gently get the soil built up. So as you can see, I want to bring it to the level of the rocks up front, and we'll build this up as we go along. And the key to this type of setup is we want to maintain a slope going from the front higher to the back, graduating for to the back because when you look at the front of a aquarium, the water will distort things a little bit. So you want to make it look like it's leaving and it's not bending away from the tank, but you're graduating up high. And with the last of this bag, 
I can start to empty this into the back just to build up. We want to try to keep the front as clean as possible. We're going to lay sand in the front. All right, so we're going to just top up the back here. Again, I want to build up the back, so have a, a two-stepped or a stepped aquarium, as I like to call it. So again, right now we're just laying down the ADA soil to build up the back. We'll build up the other back corner a little bit. And again, we want to always slope everything from the front to the back, graduating to the highest point at the back of the aquarium. Once the tank's filled with water, this will give you a much better uh, viewing than if you have it level. If the, tank, if the soil is level, when you watch the aquarium, when it's filled with water, it's going to look like things are sloping away, not going up. So the, the, you've got to remember for distortion. So as you can see, we've got our soil now all in the back. And this is a good time to get anything that came up front that's trickled through the rocks to the back again. We want to make sure we keep as much of this soil away from the front as possible because we're going to be creating a pretty cool illusion. And once the plants grow in and root in, it's going to help quite a bit too to maintain the integrity of our, our sculpture here. Now the last step is we're going to add our ADA powder. This is just a powderized version of the soil balls. And the whole idea of this is again, if we're going to start planting some foreground plants or some smaller plants, it's going to allow the plants a better chance to root into the aquarium. So we got our powder on hand. We'll add a bit now and we'll add a bit more as we plant the aquarium with the plants. So I'm just going to take some of this and just cover the, a little bit of the, the back with it. And as you can see, I'm trying to maintain the integrity. I don't want to disrupt any of the soil we have in place now. I want it to stay in place. So I'm just putting a thin layer of the, the powder on top just so I can give the plants a better chance of rooting. Now some of the plants will have a... Perfect. Now there's our basic setup with our ADA soils. And as you can see, what we're starting to develop here is we're going to build a cliffs type situation where up top we have all the plants growing, the trees and stuff, and down below will be sort of like a, a sandy beach area, a meadow you might say, and it'll come together, watch the magic unfold before your eyes. So our next step here is to get our sand in place. And I want some contrast in this, so what I'm going to use this go around, because the back is going to be dark brown with lots of greenery, lots of 
green plants, lots of texture. So up front, I want to give it a striking contrast. I'm going to put in some white sand just to give it that real division. And basically, again, I'm trying to keep this so it's divided from the front to the back. We've got the sand up front. We want to see some of these rocks as well up front, so we're going to keep the sand much thinner at the front than the soil is at the back. So again, I'll just pour this in and then I'll get in here and start moving this around. I can always add more if I need, but it just makes it easier. We want it to have that really division here between the front and the back. So we got all our sand in place. Now we're just gonna level this off. What I'll do is fill in some of the cracks here with the sand just to keep the soil from leaking through. Perfect. We now have our division here and we're going to just move some of the sand from up front towards the back. Again, I want to slope it, give it a more pleasing viewpoint to the Aquarium, so the front's very thin, just enough to cover the bottom, and as we build towards the back, we thicken the soils and substrates. And let's just even the sand out so it's all nice and even. Now that's our basic layout, or our basic pattern that we're going to start with. So now that we have all this in place, our next step is going to be to actually plant the aquarium. Now, as you can see, what we've done here is we've put our wood in uh, to give some contrast to the back of the aquarium. And one of the important things you want to do when you're creating a visual sculpture with your aquarium is you want to box the unit in. And what I mean by that, and I will show all you at home this, what we've done here is we've had the driftwood come forward and point to the middle. This driftwood comes forward and points to the middle. That's from an artistic standpoint, that's going to cause your eyes always to go focus into the tank not to go away from the tank. We don't want any branches or features pointing to the outside edges of the aquarium. As you can see again, everything points to the inside. And what this does is it's going to lead our eyes to focus into the middle of the tank and into our center sand sandy beach here. So again, we're building this composition as we go along to feature a beautiful background of plants and driftwood where the front's going to be wide open for your fish and your shrimp and everything else that you want to keep to come and frolic and play while still being pleasing to the eye and being all natural. So what we've done here is we put in our driftwood, we're having it face the middle, driftwood face the middle. Now there's a few rules of composition that you can follow, but the basic rule is this, you want to go third, third, you never really want to divide everything right in half because it'll trick the mind into thinking uh, that it's confused. You want to have flow and direction to your composition. So in this case, we want to lead everybody with our wood and the structure of the branches pointing to this area here as well as to the, the sand leads us to the back. So this is kind of where our eyes are going to focus, right in this area. So here's where we might plant a nice plant, a feature plant, and other plants on the side here to bring it together. So as we plant it, you'll see the composition come together. Now as you can tell, I've taken the liberty to already start to dry plant our aquarium. The benefit of planting your aquarium when there's no water in there is much easier. You can place your stuff and it's cleaner. You're going to have less problems. And the whole trick to this type of system is when you're using the ADA or the eco soils, you want to have as little disruption as possible. So it's really important to plant your aquarium before you fill it with water. So I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques here. 
So one of the techniques we're using today for our foreground plants, which we want to have fill in this area here, is we'll get these plants and we carry the AF plants in a cup here. They're a very good plant to use. They're parasite, snail free. Uh, they've already grown, they're already taken off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get a good pair of planting scissors and what we do with this is we'll cut it a, a piece of it off and as you can see it's about so big, about the size of my finger here. And Then what I'll do is I'll take a piece of our Rika stone and that's from ADA Aquarium and we'll take a little bit of our cotton thread. Now the reason we use cotton thread as opposed to fishing line, and this is really important, and again this is moss cotton thread, this is a specialty thread from ADA Aquarium. What we're going to do here is we don't have to tie it but we want to wrap it because over time as these plants root into the soil it's going to dissolve. So I'm just going to take this plant and wrap it to the stone and this is to prevent this plant from floating up. So once I have this plant in place on the stone you can see the bottom here I'm going to take it and I'm going to strategically place it in here and I'm just going to work it into the soil and that's going to keep it in place as we fill the tank and it's going to allow that to grow in. I have another piece here so again I'm going to take my scissor, I'm going to cut a piece off, I'm going to get a little Rika stone like so, place it on the Rika stone. I'm going to get myself a length of cotton thread and this is the moss cotton thread from ADA Aquariums again. Really cool stuff. It'll dissolve by the time the plant roots into the soil. The benefit of that is you're not going to snag your catfish and other fish won't get trapped in the thread like they do on fishing line. And I've been there and done that. You don't want to go there. So again I'm just going to wrap gently the plant in here just to prevent it from floating until it can root. Once it's rooted in the aquarium it's going to stay down at the bottom. And again, we'll just take this and strategically place it in a position where we're going to give the plant an opportunity to root. And I have one more small one to go. And again, very simple process. And I'm just going to give a little bit here to carry over the theme of these plants here. And hopefully this will all fill in nicely. Now you can see I put some crispus in the back and I put some tiger lotus around here. Now I want to have a nice feature plant in this front quarter. So what I have, I've selected this nice, it's called the fire red Amazon. It's part of the Echinodorus family. And for this, a little bit more delicate, what I'd like to do Thank you. Is use my tweezers here. And this just allows for more precise planting without disrupting the soil too much again. So I'll take the plant, and we always want to plant these plants at an angle so they don't float up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and we're just going to maneuver that in the bottom. and use our planting tools to get that pushed down into the soil. And again what I might do there is just take a couple of these Rika stones because you won't really notice them and just place it into the plant so we know that it's going to be secured there as we fill this with water and eventually that plant's going to grow over there and that'll be a nice corner plant. And then lastly I'm going to use this plant here which is your Cer Ceratoposius and this is a really cool plant. I love the texture of this creature and you'll see what I mean when I unpack it here. And again we're using the, for the most part the plants in a cup. These are amazing plants, they grow amazingly well. So when I take this out, as you can see this is a beautiful little plant. So I'm just going to spread it out a bit. And I'll take my scissors. Because I don't want to damage the roots too much. So if I just cut a section off, 
and I can take my Rika stone and again this is fine ADA product I still have one left here I'm gonna take this take some cotton moss again and this thread here is perfect for this type of application cut off a section I'm not worrying about tying it I just want to make sure this is going to stay secured so we'll just wrap it like so give it a, a, a good wrap around this will keep it in place and I'm going to put this plant I'm going to put one over in here to give it a little bit of texture in this spot and I'm going to take another two sections here so I'll split this in half again and as you can see the roots are nice and strong in these plants up top we don't want to plant too far above the crown because you'll choke the leaves off so make sure you plant your plants at the crown that's important Now that I have that in place, all the plants are in place, I'm going to take what I have left of the powder here. And now I'm just going to go around and kind of fill in some of the plants where they've been planted. And that's just going to allow these plants to root in there nice and healthy, nice and strong, use up the rest of my powder. So hopefully when we fill this we won't have too many plants floating on us. So now that we got everything in place, this is the time where we get excited. Everything's planted now. Let's get this little leaf out of here. Keep our sand nice and clean up front. So how we're going to fill this is this way. I'm going to grab a little lid. We're going to use a mister and we're going to fill it up. Now this is the most important part of filling the aquarium. Uh, again, we planted everything dry, but we want to fill it right away. These are aquatic plants. We don't want them to dry out. It's going to take you time. Grab a mister and keep misting them so they stay moist. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this plastic plate, just place it on top of the sand so I don't disrupt the sand and create a mess. And I'm going to take my garden hose, and on a fine mist, we're going to start to fill, fill the aquarium. And away we go. So gently, we're going to fill the tank this way with a mist not to disrupt our plants. So here you have it folks. We've got our tank set up. We've got all the plants in there. I've taken, it's in the timeout that we had changing film for our high production team here. I added some fish to the aquarium. We've got all the plants in place. But there's a few things I'd like to talk to you about that we did as our finishing touch to the aquarium. Number one is lighting. So for this size aquarium being 47 gallons, I'm running four T5 high output bulbs. So that's a total of four T high, output, high output bulbs. As you can see, they're very high uh, bright bulbs. Water absorbs light, so we want lots of lights for the plants to excel. And of course, I added a CO2 system just to give the plants that extra boost of mm -mm good growth. So. Our Fluval Aquarium set up with our ADA planting system is completed now. The only thing we have to do is wait for everything to grow now. We've stocked the tank with some fish. We put in our cleaning crews. We threw in about 25, 30 Amano algae eating shrimps. We got a half a dozen autosynchleous cats. And these again just to keep the plants clean so they can grow properly. Um, and we're good to go. So this is our brand new tank set up at Pisces Pet Emporium where we use the ADA system to plant it. We've got the, uh, the Fluval lighting system to help it grow, the Fluval CO2 system to help feed the plants, and we're good to go. So come on down to Pisces, check out this beautiful aquarium, see what it's about, come see one of our expert staff, and don't forget, we get brand new plants in once a week. So there's always something for you to create your own underwater paradise.